So, what's going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here, and we are back. Sharks got some amazing support out of Rage of the Abyss that was just revealed. And they got like, seven, eight new cards. Like, this is like one of the flagship new archetypes that they are pushing out of Rage of the Abyss. We don't know the extent of water support that's going to be in this set, but considering how much focus Fire has had for the past, like, three sets, it may not be a stretch to imagine the potential new water support that may be coming in these next few sets that post infinite forbidden i don't know when this is coming out on tcg this uh this wave of shark support i can guess like because infinite forbidden is july i can guess october will be getting this stuff so this isn't anytime soon but i really just wanted to take a minute because i've tried out sharks before i love the armored exceed engine as a whole and I just wanted to see, like, just real quickly take a look at what the deck can do. We'll skim over the support. So, basically, Big Jaws, if you activate a spell this turn, it can summon itself from hand, on summon it as a shark, and then it could be used as a level 3 or level 5. Kind of like Buzzsaw can be used as level 3 or level 5 for water. That might come up. There are some exceeds like Valiant Shark Lancer or um, Nash Knight. I don't know if you guys know about the Nash Knight. C exceed Nash Knight, the uh, 101 Baryon support, but this is uh, a, a cool card that you could potentially end on. You probably won't because uh, I can give you this warning now. The extra deck space is extremely tight. Like this extra deck space is so tight and we're going to get into why a little later. Uh, we got our Tuna, we got our Abyss Shark, which is a really good extender and i think now with this new support we don't need to play the foolish burial goods anymore i think we can play without foolish burial goods ice barrier preemptively locking us into water did not give us the flex room to play the draco future often so the fact that we get more consistency without it is actually really good uh, we got remora this card's a staple some people like to play it at two, some people, I personally like it at three because it's kind of like a goblin biker extender. It just detaches to summon itself from hand and then it has an effect on summon. The surface aqua jet, this is something that I thought was going to be a lot better, but the more I tried it out, the more I'm just like, I don't think you need to play this card at more than one or I don't even know if you need to play this card at all. All it does is just summon a, a fish, sea serpent or aqua from hand or graveyard. And that's it you're just locked into exceeds and then if you're going second you can make an opponent's or you can make one of your monsters gain 1000 attack and then we have the drake shark drake shark is kind of like the poplar when added it summons itself and then when it's used for a water exceed monster that needs three or more it can be treated as two materials which is amazing this is the kind of stuff that exceed decks need the shark drake which is you know drake shark is what drake, what drake shark was made to summon requires three level fours so now you can go big jaws or even abyss shark to search the drake shark and then you'll be able to summon out shark drake without really using too many resources which was normally like really difficult it's really convenient because now shark drake leviathan can just summon itself by overlaying onto any shark drake uh, exceed and then it has like just a way better effect than the original shark drake because it has a quick effect to target uh, a effect monster your opponent controls and it gains effects it can also make two attacks during battle phase and uh it does piercing as well in some situations this may create a kind of otk scenario uh, kind of like 10 pie so going second this this deck may be a really strong otk deck with just how easy it is to, to access a big swinger like this we got one for one for our tuna full because it's a uh, it's a good start like it gets us our best starter which is buzzsaw a bit of non-engine droplet for going second now we have the reincarnate unveil mail this is an armored exceed card we actually got two new armored exceed cards from this wave of support and the new monster that we got it's a level three and it doesn't summon itself so there's really no reason to play it in a shark deck maybe goblin biker might be able to use this card because it's a quick effect equip card from the graveyard during your opponent's turn so it can equip to like your uh, dark knight lancer um during your opponent's turn and to preemptively get the swallow effect if you can't wait for the full armor to exceed for whatever reason but it's definitely not a staple but unveil mail is really interesting because it both protects you by battle so it can protect something like a uh, dweller by battle so they can't just swing it to dweller i don't know th what that would do because dweller is a lingering effect but you know they can't do it and uh, after you battle, you can actually return this card to the hand and the, or return any equip card to it to the hand and then exceed summon a water monster 
just using any monster you control. It doesn't have to be the equipped monster, but it actually works really conveniently because it adds itself to hand. And then after it resolves, you can summon the Shark Trick Leviathan by, by discarding this from the hand, right? And so that's significant because when this card's sent to the graveyard, you can equip uh, an Exceed monster during the end phase, kind of like uh, you have to trigger it when it's sent there, but um, on end phase, it'll get to really re-equip itself. So if you haven't uh, resolved Dark Knight Lancer's effect that turn, you can do that. Uh, once you get equipped and then we have virtue stream which this card is actually searchable off of one of the new rank threes but it basically allows you to um sword soul blackout you target a fish sea serpent or aqua and two cards your opponent controls and pop them your opponent has to control two cards which is kind of eh but it's definitely not a bad card and then it can also banish itself from graveyard to make um any monster on field become water so uh if you have like a, a stealth kraken spawn that is already like, let's say you pop your own Kraken spawn with this card. Uh, Kraken spawn will trigger. I mean, the stealth Kraken will trigger on res to summon out your spawn. And then spawn can only pop water monsters. But if your stealth Kraken has, had left the field, your opponent's monsters are no longer water, which means now your spawn isn't as strong, but you can use the graveyard effect of Virtue Stream to make a non water monster a water. And then that will allow Kraken Spawn to actually deal with it. But that's only during main phase. So it really depends on how much extension and how many lines your opponent has. But you could potentially get up to seven or even eight interruptions in the right hand. We also got Exceed Poseidon Splash. It's not searchable in the engine, but if you use something like Exceed Force, right, the TCG exclusive, you can basically call any uh, attribute among the monsters that are already on field and then destroy all monsters on the field with that attribute that are not equipped with a equip card. And then you can banish this card from your graveyard and detach an exceed uh, material and then summon a fish, aqua, or sea serpent from your, from your graveyard to either field. So you can summon a monster from your graveyard to your opponent's field to make the uh, shark drave combo live. And then so that'll actually allow shark drake to swing into a monster without potentially giving your opponent more plus because the issue with shark drake is that when it revives a monster it doesn't revive it with its effects negated it brings it back with the effects live so let's say you're you're attacking into something like infernoid decatron and then you bring decatron brought uh back with its effects live it's going to be able to mill more cards right so you don't want to bring back a card that has a valuable effect so there is an argument for playing poseidon splash or exceed force uh, potentially to make the OTK combos work with Shark Drake. But there's also another argument that the Shark Drake isn't even necessary at all. So we're going to get into that. Before I do, just two more cards. La Virtue Dragon. So when it's summoned, it adds the Virtue Stream from deck to hand, just, just as I mentioned. And because it says Special Summon and not Exceed Summon, it also works off of Bahamut Shark, meaning we don't actually need to play a Rank 3 engine to resolve this card in our deck. And then it has like a interesting second effect where it can either detach one to add a fish sea serpent or aqua from your grave back to hand, or it can move around materials from one exceed monster to another. So it ha it's a really interesting card. And then lastly, the full armored utopic ray lancer. This is actually really significant because the equip spell that we have now that can uh, quick effect exceed summon can actually go into this card because this card can be summoned by discarding a spell or trap and using any rank four any rank four or lower exceed monster you control it's a water so even if we're locked through abyss shark or through ice barrier if you still play it then you can still play this card it has an effect where uh all your opponent's monsters lose 500 attack if it's on field at the start of battle phase which it probably won't be assuming that you that you're going second it gets to negate all your opponent's face up monster effects so if you're going into something like voiceless you may want to summon this in main phase one so that the score guardian is negated at the start of battle phase and uh if he destroys a monster by battle he can uh detach one to attack again in a row so if you go into him using like the any monster with no exceed materials he will at the very least be able to swing detach swing again so it's a pretty good card for like being able to push for big damage and the making your opponent monsters lose 500 could be significant for swinging over stuff that uh, might be too big this is like the um, testing list that I come up with. The extra space is really tight because you go through a lot of your exceeds really quickly. Even with just one card, you may end up with like five or six cards in your extra deck at the end of the turn. So uh, the extra deck I'm still figuring out. 
I do like Ragna Zero and Dweller for like going first, but I'm thinking maybe for going second, you can uh, side in the Shark Drake and the Shark Drake Leviathan rather than keeping them in, in your action deck. But I don't know. Also, Goza Match is another card that you may want to consider in this deck because of Stealth Kragen t making everything become water. It'll lock your opponent out of playing anything that is not a water monster. So it, even though it's limited, it could be a good side in just for sacking the opponent. And then you do have a few more water extenders here, like your right hand shark, you can summon yourself back from grave if you have no monsters. Crystal shark, it's kind of like Abyss shark light. It summons itself from hand or grave by having the attack of a water monster on field. It can only be used for a number as a rank, uh, as a level four, and you're locked into Exceed. So it, it's okay. Silent Sea Nettle would have been great, but it's not a fish monster. It summons itself from hand, then you're locked into water, and you can banish this card from your graveyard and then shuffle three water monsters from grave back into deck. And I think that might be make that might make it worth keeping around because you're gonna run through your Bahamuts and your Toads and some of your full armor stuff pretty quickly. So just as a recovery play, you can use Sea Nettle to uh, recover your water monsters um, into your extra deck, your water exceed monsters. So the very first line is going to be with Bahamut Shark, right? So Bahamut Shark, I, 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 I got two combos for you guys. And the first one's with Bahamut Shark. Bahamut Shark gets to go for uh, the sur surfacing big jaws from deck because it targets itself and then summons out a fish from deck, but you're locked into X seeds for the rest of the turn. So we get to go big jaws, but its effects are negated, so we don't get to search yet. But we get to go into Bahamut Shark, and Bahamut Shark gets to detach the one and go into the La Virtue Dragon. Now, normally here you would want to go into Toad, but Toad does not give you the flexibility to keep playing. Uh, unlike going for La Virtue Dragon does. So if you have an extender, you should go into Toad. If you don't have an extender, La Virtue Dragon is your card here. So La Virtue gets to add you the Virtue Stream. It's better for me to wait because I want to get the double search off of Exceed Armor Fortress to search the full armored Exceed and the Unveil Mail. And then I can overlay Fortress into Crystal Zero Lancer because we're professional Armored Exceed gamers, all right? Goblin Biker has taught me more than enough about how to maneuver with my Armored Exceed stuff. So now we use the La Virtue Dragon to detach one to add back the Big Jaws. And now Big Jaws is relatively free. It's free extender in our hand because we have a spell card. What are we going to do next? We're going to overlay into... The Dark Knight Lancer, and we're going to overlay into the Utopic Ray Lancer by discarding that same Unveil Mail. Now, after discarding it, normally we would be able to resolve it here to equip it to a monster that we control on end phase, but we're not going to do that yet. Instead, we're going to activate Dark Knight Lancer's on field effect to recycle a card with uh, Exceed in its name from our graveyard to our hand. And since Unveil Mail is always treated as an uh, Armored Exceed card, we can actually add it back. So now we get to activate the Unveil Mail. We're going to target the Dark Knight Lancer here because uh, this is probably going to be the card that's going to stay on field for longer. It won't be able to be destroyed by battle, which is pretty good. And that also allows us to resolve Big Jaws effect in hand. So because the spell card was activated this turn, you can special on this card from your hand. And then on summon, it gets to add any fish shark monster from deck to hand, meaning Abyss Shark is free, is fair game. Abyss Shark can be summoned here to search any level uh, three, four, or five fish monster from, from our deck to our hand, but now we're locked into water for the rest of the turn. So we're gonna go into our Stealth Kragen, and then we're gonna detach two from two, ex uh, from, uh, uh, two Exceed materials from monsters we control to summon out Exceed Remora, which doesn't activate. The, the part that activates is when it's summoned, you target two level four fishes in your graveyard, and then summon the back. So now we still have the Buzzsaw and we still have the Big Jaws in our graveyard. So we get to summon out both of those. Now we can go into Bahamut. And then uh, Bahamut's going to detach Summon Toad. Now I did kind of goof the zone placement here. You know, I, I shifted things around. But it's basically uh, you have one level 4 body left. Bahamut, Toad, Kragen, Dark Knight, Ray Lancer. And you can set the full armor exceed. Come your opponent's turn, you're gonna have a number of interruptions based on the situation. But uh, so I, so let's say you do Kragen spawn, let's say you do Toad, and then you know Toad can add back a water monster from Garrett to hand as like follow up. 
Then we can do our Virtue Stream, which can pop our Stealth Kraken and two cards our opponent controls. And then Stealth Kraken can uh, activate to summon out Kraken Spawn from Extra Deck for free. And then equip the Toad to it so that if Toad were to leave, again, we'd, we'd get another add back of whatever monster. Now we can go full Army Exceed because Bahamut Shark and Kraken Spawn aren't doing much in this scenario. We can overlay them into Utopic Future so that... Um, not only Toad can become another bounce for uh, our first Bahamut Shark, but also so that our full armor Exceed can target both the Exceed Armor Fortress and our Dark Knight Lancer, equip one to the other. It gains the attack, and now it becomes a non-targeting Swallow for any monster our opponent controls. And that's at any point during the opponent's turn. You don't have to uh, do that in main phase. You can do that at any point during the opponent's turn. You can wait for them to commit to a battle phase for you to swallow their monster. Off of one card, we had four interruptions, and then we have follow-up, right? So come back to our turn main phase. We get to summon out Utopic Draco feature, and now we have a live monster negation, and we still have more than enough to go for game here, right? Because with uh, Dark Knight Lancer being over 5k, Draco feature being, being a monster negate and able to snatch monsters our opponent controls, we can use Dark Knight Lancer to add back the Exceed Remora. Detach 2 from Draco Future, since it's our turn, it only needs to one negate anyway, and most likely our opponent's not surviving this turn. So we get to go into Stealth Kragen, and then we get to also go for the Surfacing Big Jaws, since we haven't used our normal summon yet. Big Jaws can search the Drake Shark, and then Drake Shark can summon itself from hand. We can overlay, go into Toad, and even though Bahamut can't attack, it's like Toad, Ray Lancer, Kragen, Dark Knight, and a Draco Future, plus a potentially stolen monster, or a potentially st stolen monster, then, you know, if you had the stolen monster, then you wouldn't be able to go for Toad, but it would still be pretty significant. In that scenario right there, that we went for Bahamut, we could have made the Shark Drake stuff, but if you look at what was already on our field before Shark Drake even hit the field, we were in a really good situation before Shark Trick even hit the field. We had four of the cards in hand, which could have been hand traps, which could have been anything, non-engine to stop our opponent. And then, you know, come our turn again, we have pretty significant follow-up that can play through at least one to two negations because we start with Draco Future and then we have a line that goes into Toad. It's definitely a really good deck so far from, from what I've been testing. I'm going to do a test hand here. So we're gonna go for one for one. I accidentally, you know, put the chicken before the egg. We get to summon the Butunaful Princess off of one for one. And then Princess gets to tribute itself, summon uh, Buzzsaw, and then we're gonna use Buzzsaw to summon out the right hand. We can go for Bahamut here. Bahamut can detach, summon Toad, right? Because when, when you have the extenders, you can summon Toad. It's better to summon Toad when you have the extenders anyway. Now we're gonna go full uh, Exceed Our Fortress. Search some Arm and Exceed stuff. Go into our Dark Knight Lancer, and then we're going to detach two to summon our Remora, which is why playing the Crystal Zero is really important. That second material is imperative for being for being able to resolve the Exceed Remora, so it is kind of a staple to play Crystal Zero Lancer, even if you don't use it as a monster. It's still a really good card to keep around. So we get to go Exceed Remora, and the Remora is going to trigger to summon back uh, two of our level four fishies from Graveyard. We get to go into a second Bahamut. This time we're going to go into the Le Virtue Dragon because we are protected with with this Toad. Now, uh, we're... I figured here uh, I want to use the Le Virtue Dragon to move around an XC material. We don't really have anything in our graveyard that's like worth adding back at the moment. So instead of going straight into the Utopic Ray Lancer, I'm going to first move the material from the Bahamut Shark to the Dark Knight Lancer. And then I can drop the Unveil Mail to summon out the Utopic Ray Lancer. Unveil Mail will trigger when it's sent to Graveyard. And then we're going to use our Dark Knight Lancer here to bounce back our Exceed Remora. And then Exceed Remora can summon itself by detaching a material from Dark Knight and from the Utopic Ray Lancer. And this is actually really good. This is good value because now the material off the Utopic Ray Lancer won't just go to the Graveyard. We actually got some use out of it. So now we have another rank 4 that we can make. So now we're going to go into Dweller here, and Dweller's going to raise the attack of all of our water monsters by uh, 500, right? So that was one board. It was like Dweller, Draco Future, Dark Knight Lancer, Toad, Virtue Stream, Full Armor, Exceed. That was one potential 
field, but I figured, I'm like, wait a minute, I can do a little more with this. So I took back the play to go into the Draco feature because I realized that I could not summon Abyss Shark while Draco Future is on field. So I figured I, I actually need to rework this line. So instead of overlaying into the Abyss Dweller, we're gonna overlay the, the Exceiver Mora and the Right Hand Shark into a Stealth Kragan. And this is actually gonna be really important because while Stealth Kragan is on field, everything becomes water, meaning we now fulfill the summoning condition of Abyss Shark. So Abyss Shark can summon itself now, searching out our surfacing Big Jaws, and, you know, surfacing Big Jaws is going to be able to resolve because we did play that uh, one for one this turn. We can't use it if we just straight up discard the Unveil Mail. We have to activate the Unveil Mail. We can't summon this if we just activate the Grave Rite Effect of Unveil Mail. Like, we need to, like, actually activate it onto a monster. Because we discarded the Unveil Mail to make the Utopic Black Ray Lancer, the one for one is kind of saving us here. But we could have easily searched like the Drake Fish. We didn't need to go for Big Jaws, but Big Jaws is going to be pretty good. Because Big Jaws will be able to search us a uh, follow up for next turn. On top of being able to make another uh, Stealth Kragan, right? So uh, we, we, we make another Stealth Kragan here on top of these two. And so basically, we, we're sitting on double Stealth Kragan, Utopic Feature. Dark Knight Lancer, and Totally Awesome. I didn't use the Surface Aqua Jet because I just felt like it wasn't necessary. It's a good follow-up card to have, a good extender to play through uh, potential hand traps. Like, let's say they had, like, Nib plus Imperm. Well, Nib plus Imperm doesn't beat Toad because Toad... They'd have to Imperm preemptively against Toad and then Nib later on. But they can't do it in the same chain because if they try to um, Imperm first and then I chain... And then I let the imperm go through and then they they chain nib i can still chain the totally against the nib because imperm hasn't resolved yet so it really it, our, our opponent has to know how to sequence that basically anything short of nib imperm or valor we can pretty much play through it so you, you didn't need the aqua jet but yeah so that's why I've, I've started considering if this card's even worth it like the last combo i made a pretty decent board off of just one card so i'm considering maybe taking this out swapping it out for for um or maybe only playing it at like one as like a decent extender but nothing more so now come the opponent's turn we're gonna equip the unveil mail to our dark knight lancer which we could have equipped it to our dweller if we still had dweller but i think dark knight lancer is the best monster to equip it to here because toad is isn't gonna stay utopic future is gonna be turned into utopic draco future and then our Stealth Kragans aren't really, like, amazing, but I guess you could equip it to one of them if you wanted to as well. So, frame one, you know, draw phase, before they even play their turn, you can go full Armored Exceed, summon out uh, Draco Future. And then you can go Toad here. Toad can then recycle one of our waters. In this case, it's going to be Bahamut Shark. Uh, Draco Future can detach negate one. Stealth Kragan can uh, pop a monster. Stealth Kraken can pop two monsters since we have two of them. And then we can use the full Armin Exceed effect in Graveyard to target, target. And then now we have a Swallow with the Dark Knight Lancer. We can use the Virtue Stream to pop a uh, Stealth Kraken and pop two cards our opponent controls. Stealth Kraken can uh, trigger. And then you can summon out the Spawn, right? Just as I did last time. I didn't have it a Max deck at, at this point in testing, but I figured it's a, it's a good thing to have, right? And then... The, the spawn can be another pop because you still have a Kragan on field. So just imagine this Stealth Kragan is still overlaid on top of the Big Jaws and the Abyss Shark. Meaning now, as I've broken down, this is seven interruptions total, five of them being removal, and um, only Virtue Stream targets out of those five. So Virtue Stream is the only removal card of all five removal effects that we had this turn that actually targets Stealth Kragan does not target. Kragan spawn does not target. Full armored Dark Knight Lancer does not target. So we have four non-targeting monster removal effects that are really strong, which isn't even counting the fact that Draco Future can snatch a monster our, our opponent controls, right? And then we have two plus extenders as follow-up, 
and live monster negates thanks to the future still having material during our opponent's turn. It's fairly difficult to play through this without non-engine. This is almost like a stronger version of what Goblin Biker can do, kind of setting up the full armor to exceed stuff and then playing around with your exceed materials and stuff during your opponent's turn. Um, Goblin Biker doesn't have as much like removal. They really have more like monster negates than anything but I think it's a very similar wavelength that we got going on here. So that's why I decided covering this deck was actually pretty interesting. And so we don't know the implications of what this stuff is going to do in OCG. It seems very combo oriented. And in that manner, combo oriented decks don't really do that well, but because it can set up a negate kind of early, that may be a big deal. Well, Chummy is a level four water, so I don't know if that'll be relevant, but it could be a potential Bahamut shark material. So in OCG, they might be, uh, they might make a lot of fun with, or they might have a lot of fun with that. But uh, yeah, let me know, let me know what you guys think about sharks in the comment section below. Um, I tried sharks here in TCG. I just like Goblin Biker better. I thought Goblin Biker was the better deck um, overall in previous formats, but now that Shark is getting all the support, Shark is definitely going to be the stronger deck. Will it be strong enough to be meta Rage of the Abyss? We don't even know all the decks coming out of Rage of the Abyss yet, but this is a really strong start to a potentially two, three sets of um, sets of water support worth uh, coming our way. So uh, this has been your boy Nisho here. Hope you guys enjoyed. Signing out.